Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast, episode number 347, a continuation of a case study on hypothyroidism. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moppet and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Moppin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Moppin's office is currently accepting new patients. In our previous podcast, we identified a patient that had come to Dr. Moppin's office through the internet, surfing the web, looking for answers to medical problems that visits to other physicians had not provided found Dr. Moffman's website, read the data that's there. And there's a, if you've ever looked at the website, which is biobalancehealth.com, you'll find there's a ton of information on there about research and scientific data and so on. Uh, so she read all the stuff that was on the website and decided, I want to come and see this doctor. In order to do that, you have to order some lab tests, and a list of 17 lab tests that Dr. Mm -hmm. Moppin wants to see are posted there. And so you order those from your lab, go to the lab, there's a prescription uh, for that. And then you fill out a patient history and a new patient form, you send that in. Dr. Moppin evaluates that, and she may tell just from that data, you know, at this point in your life, this is not a good match. I don't see a reason here for you to need hormone replacement therapy or testosterone replacement therapy. So right now, no, don't bother. Don't spend the money. Or she may look at it and go, yeah, I think this is worth the discussion. Come in and let's have a talk. We may still decide not to put you on testosterone replacement, uh, but, but there's stuff here that we legitimately ought to talk about. So she looks at the lab data to make that determination and the, the, the medical history that the person has provided. So that's what we discussed in the previous episode, episode number 346. And you can watch that if you haven't seen it, if, if you want to make the connections. Then the following thing that occurs is an appointment is made and the patient mm -hmm. comes in from wherever she is in the world uh, and they have a face-to-face -face meeting. That is the point at which this podcast begins this week. We're going to talk about Dr. Maupin's opportunity to meet Jan, uh, who is not a real name. It is a real person, but it's a composite of several different stories. But it, it began the way that I've described it. Uh, but we, we don't want to have any identifiers that would make someone discommoded and say, oh, my God, they're talking about me. Uh, so Jan uh, comes to see you. Mm -hmm. She's 45 years old. Uh, she's still menstruating, mm -hmm. but she's not wanting to have children anymore, and she's gotten a Mirena ID, ID, ID so that she won't have children anymore. Mm -hmm. But her health is just all over the board. She's in miserable shape. Right. And so you have the conversation. So when I, I first sit down with her, I have all the knowledge of her lab tests and her symptoms. Uh -huh. And I sit down and, and I asked her about, tell me what's the worst symptom? What is the worst thing that's bothering you? And first was her weight and her swelling mm -hmm. because she she would literally starve herself and what was not able to lose weight. Now you said she had an apple shaped body. What does that mean well, to that you means as a physician? As a physician, that? when I mean everybody kind of gets that that her arm her arms were and legs were normal size. Right. Her hands were swollen though. Right. And her feet were swollen. But her arms and legs appeared to be normal size, but she had all of her weight in her breasts and her belly. Okay. Not her thighs, not her legs. So, but, all, it's, so she that's was the same thing you call apple. diabetes. Well, it's it's a it's, predictor. It, it's a yeah, and yeah. it's a predictor for heart disease. It's a predictor for diabetes. It's a predictor for really bad stuff in your future. How many checklists do you carry around in your head? I mean, I, I mean, all you, of them. You go up to the mall <laughs> all and you go, okay, heart attack, yeah. diabetes, thyroid. I try to turn that goiter. off when I just go shopping, but yeah. <laughs> or go out to dinner. But I, yeah, I've got I do do that, yeah. but I try not to like. It true. Make anyone nervous. I mean, I'm not. I'm not doing that all the time. You don't so grab somebody's hand. No, gosh, okay. no, no. But I, I, I will talk to my trainer and go. That guy over there looks like he might have a heart attack soon. You know, like he's gray and he's yeah. working out and he's out of breath, and his trainers, his trainers, pushing him. And I'm like, right. eh, you need to talk to his I'd trainer. Back off if you would. Yeah, yeah because you know. You guys he, all current CPR. Yeah, <laughs> they are. But yeah. you know. That's it's one of those things. I don't want to be the one having to do it, the right. CPR. Yes, you know. So I, and I much rather have him see his 
Stop cardiologist, you know, and get taken well, care well, of. Well, we digress. Yes. So, I, But I was asking about the apple-shaped body. <laughs> yeah, and, and it puts you at risk are normal, for everything. The hands are swollen. Right. But and this everything is, else is in the And trunk. this is the reason thyroid has to be treated. Okay. If you don't treat thyroid, <laughs> you are putting your... I mean, for doctors, if you're not treating thyroid... You are leaving somebody open to heart disease. Their cholesterol goes up. They gain fat in their belly. They are exhausted. They don't work out anymore. They don't eat right because they're exhausted. They don't have the energy. Their hair falls out. They feel bad about themselves. They don't go out anymore. They stop, They st I mean, they stop interacting with other people. It's a really terrible thing. And everybody goes, oh, thyroid, that's, you know, you just, you don't need that. You just want a diet pill. Seriously, that's the attitude of most physicians. And... I totally don't get it. I totally Why? see. Because it's a simple treatment. I, it's a simple it's an treatment. It's expensive one. I know. I know. But they are some, I mean, I don't know who is promoting the fact that most people shouldn't be treated for low thyroid, but, but it leads to high cholesterol. Well, then they're taking a statin instead of just taking thyroid, which would right. solve the problem. It lowers your LDL maybe, maybe that's cholesterol. The, the statin is more expensive than the thyroid. It is. The thyroid is making more money. Maybe. I don't know that, but maybe. I mean, it seems unusual that you would pick a more, more expensive path, but sometimes, I mean, sometimes doctors don't think to the next thing. They don't think, well, what caused this high they're cholesterol? They're just solving the immediate problem. Right. You've got it's a high cholesterol. Today, break the fever. Right. So okay. it's, they're not looking at that. So, so it's very important to have your thyroid treated. And this woman came in and when she's talking to me, I'm, I, I am observing her more than I would in a, in a public place where I'm just observing other people. This is part of what doctors do. They look at you and they're thinking, how are your symptoms and how are your complaints, which are your, your symptoms and your lab? How do they get substantiated by what I'm seeing? Okay. So one in the conversation with her, one of the things that you have to explain to her is that most of her lab results from the labs, mm -hmm. most doctors looking at it would say, well, she's in the normal ranges. Right. And so we don't want to treat that because there's nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. But you look at that and see something different, partly because many of the normal ranges that come from the lab are only tested and established for men. They're right. only normed on men. Right. Lipids, lipids and thyroid are only normed on men. So when They've a woman has a problem women. with lipids or thyroids, how does a doctor know that? Well, they know she's a woman, and they should know that there's a different normal for 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 women. But they but they don't really either read the journals or don't have time. I don't know, but but you can't look at a lab sheet and look at the at a total cholesterol mm -hmm. and say. That's bad because most of the time women have a lot of this HDL, the good cholesterol, that makes the total go up. Right. That's great. I don't want to lower the good cholesterol. Well, like her estrogen numbers were high. Yes. But they were high for the wrong kind of estrogen. Right. They were high for the estrone, the old lady estrogen, and they were low for the young women's estrogen. Partially because if you have a morena, it lowers, it lowers the... Um, the young woman's estrogen a little bit. Okay. That's because it's got progesterone in it. That's okay. Right. Okay. And uh, but the estrone was high. It comes from the adrenal gland. It was high because the the testosterone was low. So she has two problems. Okay. Uh, in my head, I'm thinking she has a low testosterone. She has a low thyroid. I I have to ask her questions or rule out other things she might have. Right. And go over her med list with her because some of them can interact. So what are the kind of things that you ask to rule out? Well. Um, I have to rule out whether she has um, a, well, I, I want to know if her lipids are high or low, because if her LDL is high, then that substantiates my my reasoning on her thyroid. And lipids high or low based on your experiential knowledge, not based on the lab normal, because right. that's for guys. Right. Okay. So right. again, another reason. Another reason go that. go to a doctor with experience. Sad, sadly, you have to reinterpret the lab. Yeah. Even though they put normal and abnormal there, they aren't putting healthy and not healthy there. You know, mm. so that's what I'm looking at: is this healthy or not? Okay. So, so I'm looking at things that I'm looking for a pituitary tumor. I'm looking for other things in her history that could possibly could be an explanation for that. cause all of cause both of these problems. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to go back to what caused it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Well, with thyroid. It doesn't have to be a pituitary <laughs> so, tumor. So it's like having a, a plumbing leak and just keeping them off in the floor, not ever trying to figure out where it's coming from or right, how to fix it. Right, right, right. So I'm, I'm making sure that I'm not just 
mopping the floor. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to find the real reason. So on on her um, on her thyroid, it could have been years of living in the Midwest and not getting enough iodine in her food. I was just going to say years that. of that. Yeah. So it could just be that, and and iodine's not going to fix it usually at that point when she's really got symptoms. But if that is a concern, then you put them on iodine. I put them on iodorol. Yeah. And that's an an iodine mixture of different kinds of iodines that work very well to give you enough iodine for your thyroid to work well. But I put, I would put her, and I did put her on thyroid too. Okay. Now, one of her medical problems is that she had celiac disease. Okay. Now, celiac so disease. She's gluten-free. She's gluten-free. All right. And she's gluten intolerant. And even gluten intolerant, she's all swollen. So I'm looking at her. Her face is round. Her belly's round. Her hands are all swollen. Her wedding ring is almost cutting off the blood su supply to her, her finger. Yeah. So you know that. This is, has not been there forever, mm -hmm. and um, she, and she has all the symptoms of low thyroid. So, I I look at that and I'm like, I I need to treat that. I've proven I've proven that nothing else is causing the thyroid besides, or I've kind of proven. I mean, it's it's hard to prove that your history of lifelong um, absence of iodine has caused it, but I'm going to assume that I found nothing else. Okay. So I treat her yeah. with. So my choices are. Synthroid, which is just T4, and many women can't make their T4 into T3, which is the active form, the part that really gets your metabolism going. So her T3 is low already, so I'm not going to treat her with Synthroid. And I usually don't treat women to begin with with Synthroid. I treat men some, most of the time because men do well with Synthroid, mm -hmm. but Synthroid was only tested on men. It was never tested on women. And not so, all men respond to Synthroid. And not all men respond to Synthroid, but that's my first choice for men. Yeah. And then my first choice for women is Armour Thyroid, but Armour Thyroid has gluten in it. So if any of you have celiac disease or gluten intolerant and you're on Armour Thyroid and it, it is not working well, then you need to be switched to Nature Thyroid or WP Thyroid. Those are two other natural pork or pork is... They come from pigs, basically, pig thyroids that don't have gluten in them. And so you will respond much better to those. So for her, I chose Nature Thyroid, mm -hmm. which is non-gluten thyroid. Okay. And I, and I wrote for, and I also suggested that she get some iodorol to take with a pinch of sea salt every morning with breakfast. And so then you're trying, but using that type of thyroid, uh, the, the Nature Thyroid. You're trying to raise her T3? And T4. So and it T4. has both T3 and T4. Okay. Basically, pig thyroid has all the thyroids we make. Okay. It has one, two, three, and four, but three and four are the most significant, and those are the ones we test. So it has it has right. both of the thyroids that we, that we need, and so that's why I choose natural, and it seems to work so much better for women. So that's why I choose that for mm -hmm. women. It's not like I don't use Synthroid. I just don't use it as my first choice. So you treat her with Nature Thyroid to address the thyroid issues that you now know both from the labs and from her discussion with you of her symptoms and medical history. Right. Because you, you're you not looking for a tumor anymore. You, you know that's not mm -hmm. there. Uh, so then what about the testosterone? So then... Because she'd been told she didn't need it because she was in a normal range. Right. And the normal range written on the testosterone sheet is like... 0.2 to 2 as normal, depends on which lab you look at. So when a doctor looks at that, it looked normal, mm -hmm. but it's really not compared to young, healthy women. It's not. Right. So they don't have a really good normal for free testosterone for women at this time. Well, and that's an important piece yes. too, the free testosterone. The free testosterone is what I'm talking about, not total. Yes. So when I, and, I talked to and, her and about that. Do I understand that. this correctly? To, to get that data... The doctor has to order a test that will tell the free testosterone. Right, you Generally, have to order, order a total testosterone. Right, and that and for men, sometimes that tells us some information. For women, it doesn't really tell us any information. Okay. The total really isn't going to help us. But when, if the doctor doesn't know to order that, right, he, they're not going to get the data. Right, and so people say, well, my testosterone's fine. Well, is your free testosterone fine? Yes. And that's really the key. Okay, so hers was really low. And hers was really low. Right. So... Uh, I talked to her about testosterone, that we're going to replace it, not like they replace it with creams and gels and things that she has to remember all the time or things that may not work. We're going to go straight to the best treatment for testosterone, especially for women, is under the skin or pellets that we place under the skin 
and they last four months. They really last six months, but at a good level, they last four. And so when a patient comes in the first time, mm -hmm. you have all the lab tests, the blood draws first, mm -hmm. and uh, they fill out all the paperwork with the symptoms first. and stuff. I've already looked at it. And you've already looked at it. I come in, you evaluate me based on our discussion, mm -hmm. and then you say, okay, I want to I wanna do testosterone or thyroid or both or what have you. And then four months later as a female, mm -hmm. come back in, and you do another blood draw? Yes, at three, at three and a half three months. Three and a half months to check where are we with all these Actually, things. Actually, we do the we do the blood draw on the very first follow-up visit, uh -huh. and usually there's just one follow-up visit, and that is... Yeah, unless we, there's additional problems. Right, unless there's additional problems that we don't get completely solved yeah. in the in the first uh, follow-up visit, and that's not very common. But we have one follow-up visit at three and a half months, a little early because we don't want the pellets to run out. Right. So if I've underdosed a little bit, I don't want you to go back to square one because right. it takes a while to come back up after we have treated you at the very first dose. It takes about three to four weeks to get really feel really normal. And then if we don't, if you come down too early and we have to start from square one, it's going to take another three weeks to right. feel better. So you're going to have six or eight weeks of being miserable. Right. And, like I, don't, and I don't, and I don't want that. So I have you come back two weeks early yeah. before anybody's going to be out of their pellets. Right. And if you have dropped, that means you need more dose. Sure. And then I re redo the dose and decide on a maintenance dose, which will be every four months. And, and then it's just a maintenance. They don't have to talk to you every time they come in. After the sec after the follow-up visit, they don't have to come in and have a consult every time. They don't have to have blood drawn every time. Right. Somebody with thyroid is going to have to have blood more often than somebody without thyroid. But if you're just getting pellets, it's once a year after that. So this woman comes in three and a half months later with a new blood draw. And you sit down and you talk to her. You're looking at the data. I'm looking at you're her. You're seeing where all these things are. And you're looking at her. And she's lost all of her swelling. And she doesn't, and her her hands aren't, I mean, her ring moves. Uh -huh. You know, I'm looking, I look at her hands. You, you know, see all that. I see all that. Yes. Her handshake was not cold anymore. Right. And then I go through all of her symptoms with her. I also have the blood work. And you have that pictures I've of her at. from the first visit. Right. Let's look at you now. Let's yeah. look at you then. Yeah. And that really is helpful. Yes. So... So I point these things out. Sometimes people forget right. what they look like, what they felt like. I go through all her symptoms. Oh, I didn't I didn't remember I had that. Yeah. I didn't remember I had that. Yes. So we go through all the symptoms and rate them. Is this 100% better? Is it halfway better? Is it a third of the way better? And then I take the thyroid symptoms and the testosterone symptoms, and then I change dosages based on that, yeah. is on their symptoms. In the thyroid, if there's a problem with the thyroid and figuring out the right dose... I often will use a basal body temperature, which is an old-fashioned but very effective method of figuring out if somebody's got the right thyroid. We used to use those when we were trying to get pregnant. Right. Yeah. That's right, and so did we. So basal body temperatures tell you two things. Um, one, if, if you have enough thyroid, because your thyroid actually helps your, um, helps your cycle if you're female. That's if your thyroid's normal, yeah. your cycle will, should be normal 28 to 30 days right go ahead well i was gonna say it's, it's funny remembering our fertility doctor never mentioned thyroid and phyllis had a mm -hmm. thyroid deficiency mm -hmm. and she, and she, nobody knew it until you found it right but she may i don't know if she had it then or not when she was she trying to get symptoms, preggant I think. well I mean, then best i recall yeah but i think now yeah for infertility doctors look at thyroid. Okay. I mean, in, in that way back when, I'm not sure that they did, but they yeah, do. Way they do back now. when. Well, way back when. How old Spencer? 22. Okay. So, I mean, you know, that was, it was right. a while ago. Yeah. So, so when, when we look at, when we look at um, basal temperature, it tells us two things. One is, is your thyroid working? For mm -hmm. women, if your thyroid's working and you're not ovulating and you're, you know, you're, or you're menopausal, your temperature should be 97.9 or above. Okay, so if you're not 97.9, you don't have enough thyroid. Exactly. You're not burning enough calories. It provides the fuel for all the hormones to go and do their jobs. Right. And it actually makes it, you're making heat out of your food. Yeah. So that's how we measure what your thyroid makes it possible for you to make heat and make energy out of your yeah, food. They measure that Otherwise, yeah. you store it as fat. Yeah. So if your temperature is 97.9 and you're female, then you should have adequate testosterone. Now, if you're ovulating, then you will be 97, you'll be above 97.9 in the second half of your cycle. 
Yeah. Because then you should go up at least 0 0.4, 0 0.6 when you ovulate. So even if you have a low baseline, you should go up 0 0.4 or 0.6, that proves that you're ovulating. Yes. So we look at this differently. It's not that's why one lab test can't tell tell you the truth. <laughs> so so you get the second I look at lab it test pre, at three and a premenopausal, postmenopausal, yeah. ovulating, not ovulating. Yeah. Yeah. And and so ninety five percent of what she had come in complaining of was gone. Was gone. She was much, much, much better and she was ecstatic. And then I said, Yeah, let's let's change this a little bit. Right. Because some of these symptoms aren't all gone. Right. So we need to buff them up. So I changed her thyroid so fine dose. Fine tuning. Yeah, fine yeah. tuning is what happens at the second visit. And we fine tune whatever you've been put on mm -hmm. and decide what your follow-up will be, how often you need your pellets, how much your dose will be for the next year. So in the first podcast, we talked about the one of the reasons that we are uh, going through this on the podcast is that Dr. Maupin provides training, clinical training, for other doctors who want to become hormone specialists. There, There's a mass market out there for people to provide testosterone. Testosterone and knowledge about testosterone is not enough in and of itself to solve so many of these problems. There's almost always additional balancing that needs to be done for other hormones. And you need to know to go to a doctor that knows that and knows how to balance those things in tandem with the testosterone. Well, so we thyroid, found that you can look at the specialty of the doctor. Right. The specialty of the doctor, there are doctors that understand women and their cycles, which are family practice. OBGYNs, and that's really about it. Mm -hmm. So those two, maybe endocrinologists, but not really, not in general. But those two types of doctors, if you look to see who, what kind of doctors they are before they went into hormones, for women, that's really important because everybody else doesn't really know how to, how to take care of estrogen or cycles or what's supposed to happen or what it looks like when somebody's bleeding too much. Internal medicine doctors and other doctors who don't deal with blood, they go, ah yeah. I'm not doing that in general. I mean, I'm just yeah, speaking generally. You don't want to go to a to get your hormones balanced. Right, right. So, so you kind of have to look at the specialty. Mm -hmm. and, then you have, and then you have to look and see if they're a part of a franchise. Because the franchise doctors basically, they, they hit, like we were talking about last time, they hit everything with testosterone. Right. Basically, the law of the hammer. if this is, yeah. you know, they change the dose of the testosterone. And that's what was when I got the the letter from the patient that gave me her whole history but didn't sign it and didn't give me any way to, to answer her. Right. Um, I, she, her doctor had been hitting her with different doses of testosterone every two months. And so she couldn't figure it out. You know, no some, one could figure it throw out. Throw some testosterone at the wall and see if it sticks. And she was miserable. Yeah. And so, but that looked really familiar. I see that a lot yeah. in patients who come, you know, come for a different type of testosterone treatment. All right. Well, hopefully you will learn about conversations that you need to have with your physician. And you may want to even suggest to your physician that they look at the possibility of getting trained by Dr. Maupin in one of her clinical training workshops. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.